Okay, so how do we solve this type of equation? Well, that's the topic of this video. And uh, when you're dealing with any sort of equation in algebra, the first thing you need to do is to identify what type of equation you're dealing with. Okay, there's a lot of different types of equations in algebra, radical equations, uh, systems of equations, linear equations, quadratic equations, uh, rational equations, exponential equations, logarithmic equations. I can go on and on and on, but you get the idea. Just because something has an equal sign, uh, that makes it an equation. But uh, what type of equation and what type of tools and techniques? Well, that uh, varies widely in algebra. So the first thing you need to do is to identify what you know what we're dealing with here. So that's the first question you want to ask yourself. Okay, and if you know the answer to that, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I would be interested in that, and I would be even more interested in uh, your ability to solve this. Okay, so if you don't know the answer, if you're like, I don't know what this is called, but I know how to solve it, well, that's uh, perfectly fine as well. Go ahead and put your solution into the comment section as well. But um, if you're totally lost, stick around for a couple minutes. You're going to learn a lot about how to solve these type of equations. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, there's no such thing as a bad math student. Okay, so if you're failing in math, or you're struggling in math, that's your current situation, but it doesn't have to remain there. Okay, I'm telling you right now, everyone can be reasonably, reasonably successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, uh, you got to be willing to work hard. Okay, some of you need to work harder than you currently are as well, but that's okay. Okay, so if you're willing to do the work, the second thing you need is great math instruction, clear and understandable, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, even college level, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. It will really, really help you out. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with the math section, a lot of you are going to be taking tests like uh, tests like the SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe the GED. I have a large library of test prep courses that can help you out. Um, also, if you homeschool, have great middle and high school uh, math courses for homeschoolers that you might want to check out. And if this video helps you out, consider helping me out by liking it and subscribing to my channel. But uh, let's go ahead and get going and talk about how to solve this equation. But the first thing we want to do is to kind of recognize what am I, you know, what are we dealing with here? Okay. Well, there's two ways we can kind of classify this particular equation. So fractions with variables. Okay. So here is a fraction, like an arithmetic fraction, right? I would say, oh, one half, that's a fraction. But if I have something like x over x plus 1, where there's variables uh, going on in, uh, in some sort of fraction in algebra, these are called rational expressions. Okay, So fractions where the numerator and denominator have some sort of variable. Now, there's more of a technical um, definition and some requirements to that. But just, yeah, I think that's an OK um, we don't have to get overly technical here. If you just if you're thinking, oh, I got a fraction has some variables, rational expression, that's perfectly fine. Okay, these in fact have to be polynomials, but that's okay. Okay, so here we have uh, uh, some sort of rational expressions going on, and this is an equation. So anytime you have this equal sign, uh, you want to be thinking whatever you describe this uh, as as an equation. So you could describe this as a rational um, equation, because that's okay. That's what exactly what it is. But I want you to also look at this in this way, okay? Here, I have one fraction, okay, i.e. a rational expression. But let's just use the word fraction here. I have one fraction equal to another fraction. Anytime you see that in algebra, and this is not to be confused with something like this. So let's say I, I have this equation and I have um, this y over here, okay? Now, this is not one fraction equaling to another fraction. I have something else going on here. So this would not classify what I'm talking about here. If I have one fraction equaling to another fraction, I have something called a proportion, okay? And you've got to love proportions in algebra because they're so easy to work with. So a proportion is nothing more than two equal fractions. I'm saying that this fraction, okay, is equal to this fraction. That's what this is saying in algebra. That's what this symbol says. 
So let's just um, look at something here, uh, here real quick. Let's say I have the fraction 1 half, and let's make up another fraction. That's equal to 1 half. Well, I don't know. Let's say 3 over 6. So this is one fraction. It's equal to another fraction. That, by definition, is a proportion. And what you can do uh, to solve a proportion, okay, is use this property called the cross product, okay? If I cross multiply, notice that the product of these uh, of uh, this cross multiplication is equal. So in other words, two times three, let's write that here, two times three is equal to one times six, okay? Uh, two times three is six, six is equal to six, there you go. So this is the cross product and you can use this property to solve proportions. So with that being said, I'm thinking, hmm, this is one fraction, is equal to another fraction. Can I use the cross product to solve this? You absolutely can. So I can go this times this, that's going to be equal to this times this. But you have to be uh, very careful here with these expressions like y plus 2. Okay. Remember, this is a sum. Uh, so always put those in parentheses. Oftentimes, you won't have uh, these expressions in parentheses, but you should uh, have them in there so not to create any confusion. Okay. So if you understand my, you know, drift here and you think, oh, okay, I know where this guy is going. Well, then go ahead and pause the video and see if you can go ahead and solve the rest of the problem. But um, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're definitely going to need to know how to handle an equation like this. But let's go ahead and continue forward and we'll use this proportion, this cross product strategy to solve this. There's other ways you can uh, have done this. Okay. We could multiply and clear the fractions by using LCD. So if you want to do it that way, that's perfectly fine as well, okay? But before I show you the solution, you go ahead and do it your way, get your answer, and then, you know, we can kind of compare notes here in a second. But let's go ahead and use the cross product to solve this proportion. So we're going to have y times y is y squared, and then 1 times y plus 2 is y plus 2. So at this point, I just kind of... Um, change this proportion to something that looks like this. So what are we dealing with now? Okay, well, hopefully you recognize this as a quadratic equation. You're like, oh no, I'm going from a proportion to quadratic equation. And some of you might be kind of sad because you might be saying, I don't want to deal with a quadratic equation. I'm trying to get rid of this proportion. And then now you're giving me another type of equation. Well, yes, unfortunately. So in algebra, uh, you know, everything is interrelated and connected. So uh, I'm sorry to say, yes, you do need to, uh, to learn everything that your teacher is teaching you, but that's what we have right now. We have a quadratic equation. So hopefully you're like, ah, quadratic equation, I can tackle that thing. Let's go ahead and just put this determined face in there. Go ahead and uh, solve this. Of course, you can see um, uh, what I'm doing here. It's pretty easy to solve. What you want to do when you're solving this type of a quadratic equation is get all your variables to one side, set it equal to zero, because we're dealing with a trinomial here. So I'll move this y and this two over to this side, so I end up with this uh, quadratic trinomial. That's how we would call this. y squared minus y minus two. Well, guess what? I can factor this. You always want to try to factor. Uh, this, of course, is equal to zero. So this would be y minus two times y plus one is equal to zero. Now. If you could, you know, if you recognize this and you were able to just do this on your own, if you're like, oh, yeah, I was going there, you know, uh, even though you told me that that's what I was going to do anyways, well, then I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face for being such a good math student. Okay, this is showing, you know, um, showing me that, yes, if you, you know, if I was looking at your work, you're like, yeah, this student knows what they're doing. They must be watching a lot of that uh, guy on YouTube, that math guy on YouTube, what, whatever. Maybe you're just paying attention to your teacher. Whatever the case is, that's good stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on and solve for y. So we have y minus 2 times y plus 1 is equal to 0. We'll set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve. Now, if you don't know exactly what I'm doing, uh, go ahead and review quadratic equations and factoring. There's a lot of stuff here. So again, if you need help on any of this stuff, I have tons of stuff in my YouTube uh, channel on all these topics, and I teach this very thoroughly in my algebra courses. By the way, if you need some algebra uh, notes, I'm going to leave uh, links to those in the description of this video. But now when I solve for y, I have y minus 2 is equal to 0, I get y is equal to 2. y plus 1 is equal to 0, uh, y plus 1 is equal to 0, I get y is equal to negative 1. Remember, when you're dealing with quadratic equations, um, you're always going to have two solutions, and here they are. 
So these uh, two solutions are the solutions to this quadratic equation. They may not be the solutions to our original equation. Now, the reason why is because when we uh, kind of did this cross multiplication, we introduced the possibility of something called extraneous uh, roots, okay, extraneous solutions. So what that means is that you could possibly get answers. These answers down right here may or may not be the actual solutions. They're definitely the solutions to this equation, but they may or may not be the actual solutions to this equation. So how can I uh, determine that? Well, you need to check both of these, okay? Let's go ahead and check both of these in the original equation, y equals 2 and y equals negative 1, and we'll see if they work, okay? So y is equal to 2, y equals negative 1. Let's go ahead and check uh, y equals 2. So I'm going to replace this y, this y, this y with 2, and we'll see what happens, okay? Hopefully, the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side. So you can see here, I'm replacing these y's with 2. There's 2, 2, and 2. Now let's go ahead and do the arithmetic. So 2 over 2 plus 2 is 2 over 4. Is that equal to 1 half? Well, 2 fourths, when I reduce that, is 1 half. 1 half is equal to 1 half. So that works. The left-hand side is, in fact, equal to the right-hand side. So 2 is a good solution. All right, so now let's go ahead and check y is equal to negative 1. We'll do the same thing. We'll replace this y, this y, this y with negative 1. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So I have negative 1 over negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is a positive 1. So negative 1 divided by positive 1 is a negative 1. Then here I have 1 divided by negative 1. 1 over negative 1. Uh, positive divided by negative is also a negative. So negative 1 is equal to negative 1. Guess what? Both of these are good solutions. So there you go. That's how you solve this problem. All right. So how many of you uh, did this all on your own? Or maybe you took a different approach. Maybe you, you, uh, uh, you multiplied uh, the equation uh, by the LCD and you, went and you uh, got your answer that way. As long as you understood that there was a possibility of extraneous roots and you checked all this, if you were able to do all of that, well, then I must go ahead and give you a lovely happy face. And let's go ahead and give you an A++, a 100. Matter of fact, we'll make it 110%. I'm going to give you a few stars. Matter of fact, I'll give you four stars, maybe five stars. And I'm going to tell you just to take the rest of the year off. Okay, I'll send you your report card with your A++ uh, and be like, you know what? You're just too good to be in my classroom. You obviously know this stuff. Well, look, in all seriousness, uh, this was not the hardest problem uh, that you'll uh, encounter uh, in algebra, but here's the deal, okay? Um, before you take on more challenging problems, you need to fully understand what's going on with the more basic problems, okay? Remember, algebra is interconnected. It's all related. There's nothing your teacher is going to be teaching. There's nothing out there that you can be like, oh, this stuff, I'll just throw, I don't understand this, these things, so I'll just throw that out. Yeah, they can't be that important if I don't understand them. Believe me, uh, if you don't uh, deal with the things you don't understand, they will come back and haunt you, okay? So uh, when you practice math, right, and you're like, boy, I don't understand that, just, you know, recognize not understanding is actually good, okay? Now, why is that good, okay? Well, if you're saying, I don't understand these things, well, you're identifying what you don't know. That's the first step in fixing your math problems. So you're like, okay, I don't know this. Well, let's go ahead and learn that. And when you do that, you'll be surprised how powerful uh, that is in terms of, you know, really increasing your math skills. Okay, so usually you, um, you know, if you just fix one or two little problems, that, that goes a long way in your overall understanding and your ability to do mathematics. Okay, so hopefully this video helps you out. And again, if that's the case, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. And if you need any help um, uh, with algebra or any other level of mathematics, I have a ton of stuff on my YouTube channel. Uh, I got my math notes down there, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.